Hi and welcome to the second tutorial in the series. This tutorial is going to look at how we can simplify our animations um, and spend less time doing them. In the previous lesson we looked at how we do a stop frame animation and how we have to draw each single frame individually to make something happen. So in this case what I've got is a, um, a circle that moves across the screen. As you can see it's kind of jerky. What we're going to look at today is uh, motion tweens and how we can do exactly the same sort of animation process but in, in a lot less steps. So in this example I use nine frames um, to get the circle from that position over to that position and I have to move them manually. In the movie tween, uh, motion tween example we're going to be looking at doing exactly the same thing but in a lot less steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select frame 9 and press F5. What that's done is extended the frame um, from frame 1 to frame 9 and nothing changes. If I change it here it's going to change it on this frame as well because they're all one long frame. What I'm then going to do is right click anywhere on that timeline and go create motion tween. I'm then going to press F6 at the end and then I'm just going to move the circle across the screen. I always like pressing shift and then the arrow keys because it gives me a straight line um, and I can work out how much to move it across. So now what I've got is a starting position and an ending position and the, the software automatically moves the, the circle across for me. If I press control and enter it already does all the movements for me and I've got my animation. As you can see it's still quite jerky. To fix jerkiness what you usually have to do is increase the frame rate. A good frame rate usually is about 30 frames a second. I can then extend this out to say about 30 frames and now I've got over the course of one second the ball to move, uh, the circle to move from one side of the screen. If I press F6 again on frame 60 I can get it to move all the way back to where it started. And now when I run the animation I'll have a circle that goes backwards and forth. And that was really quick. If you compared it to a stop frame animation it took, this took no time at all. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at how we can make that circle follow a particular path.